I just love it when I'm away from YouTube for like a little bit over a week and then I come back and I'm like, oh shit, I have like a bunch of videos to do. It's always fun when you're not keeping track of them. Regardless, I wanted to do this one first just because it was going to be the shortest out of the videos that I had planned, so let's just get it out of the way. Welcome back to another episode of Gaming Discussions. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but I'm not exactly sure at the moment what topics I want to talk about. A few have been bubbling in my head a little bit, like I want to do an Xbox Series Series X versus PS5 video when a little more information comes out, and maybe I'll do a video giving my thoughts on the Avengers game since I just beat that and it's been the talk of the town. I'm not sure though because there are a lot of other videos I'm going to be busy with this month, so it's definitely a maybe, maybe not thing, but regardless, as you can tell by the title, the topic that we'll be discussing today is the Ubisoft Forward event for September of 2020. Ubisoft Forward, for those that don't know, is basically Ubisoft's answer to the popularity of dedicated game streams like Nintendo Direct, State of Play from PlayStation, Inside Xbox, you name it. Or at least it seems like it's the answer given that COVID-19 stopped Ubisoft from doing a traditional E3 press conference this year. This particular show also comes at a very contentious time for the company as they have been hit with several reports of sexual misconduct, racism, poor working conditions, other different microaggressions. Before the show, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guimot released a video kind of discussing the allegations and apologizing on behalf of the studio, but Ubisoft has still had to reckon with these allegations and the justified criticism that they've faced for them and that they've faced for the way that they've addressed them. In a way, this event may have actually been important to reestablishing the company's good standing, and perhaps Ubisoft was hoping that an event like this could remind people more of the quality of their games. Ubisoft hosted their first forward event back in July, which I'm gonna be honest, I thought it wasn't very good. The pacing and presentation weren't too bad, but most of the games that they show just didn't look that appealing or in some cases they were presented in ways that didn't get me that excited. So I can't say I was all that excited going into this new event, especially given that Ubisoft is a third party company that I think is hard to get excited for these days, but I still figured I'd give them a shot and see if they'd come through with any surprises, especially given several of the leaks that were coming out prior to this event. In fact, the first two big announcements from the show were pretty much leaked beforehand, which continues to prove my theory that Ubisoft is probably the worst third party company when it comes to keeping a secret and holding in leaks. As it was though, leaks aside, the show was just average. It wasn't amazing, it wasn't terrible, there were a few decent announcements, but nothing too special. Getting into what was shown, the event started off with Immortals Phoenix Rising. Originally, the game was known as Gods and Monsters, but it has returned under a new name. It will be coming out on December 3rd of this year across all consoles, and it's supposedly getting an exclusive demo for the Stadia. The game itself looks pretty cool. I was intrigued by it when I first saw it, and I was happy that we finally got to see the scope of the world and later on some actual gameplay for it. I did see a lot of people saying that it looks like a clone of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and to an extent I did see that but either way this was a highlight for me and I'm definitely looking forward to trying it out. And then they announced the Prince of Persia The Sands of Time remake which would have been a huge announcement and a great surprise if they managed to contain the leak which unfortunately they didn't. But regardless Prince of Persia is back. After not having a proper game since 2010's Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands, Ubisoft has decided to remake what is probably the most iconic game in the series and a title that many consider to be one of the greatest games ever. It's coming out for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on January 21st, though rumors were originally saying that it would be on the Switch and several Ubisoft sources have mentioned the Switch, even if that wasn't directly said during the show. Not sure if it actually is coming to the Switch or not, but either way, I'm happy the game's coming back. I know the series has a very popular following and for a while people have been asking for it to come back, but am I the only one that thinks it looks a little bit off? Maybe it's the fact that it looks more like a remaster than a remake that I'm not as excited for it, but I just feel skeptical, especially because in recent years, the bar for remakes has been raised by games like Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, as well as Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and most recently, the excellent Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 Remake, to the point where seeing something like this just kind of concerns me. Even so, as someone that doesn't really play Prince of Persia, I'm happy for the fans that are excited for it, and I just hope they get something good out of it and not a lazy recreation. After that, they delved into Hyperscape. Ubisoft really tried to sell me on another Battle Royale game by showing me a bunch of video clips of content creators reacting to cool things that they did in the game. I already don't care much when companies make videos like this where they include content creators doing these over-the-top, loud, potentially fake reactions in some vain attempt to get me excited 
excited for the game, and I don't see why that would change this time around. They also announced some turbo mode thing, but as someone that doesn't really play the game or care that much for it, that just kind of flew over my head. Moving on, the next portion of the show discussed Rainbow Six Siege, and this was the part that felt the longest for me. There was a lot of shit announced all at once, but to sum it up pretty quickly, there's a Rainbow Six World Cup happening for the esports scene, which even though I don't really care much about Siege, as someone that likes esports and likes seeing esports grow, I do think that that sounds cool. Sam Fisher from Splinter Cell is going to be in the game, which is probably even more frustrating for Splinter Cell fans, given that Ubisoft refuses to make a new Splinter Cell game. They showed some well-drawn but somewhat pace-breaking 2D trailer for him in Operation Shadow Legacy that felt like it contributed nothing to the show, and then made the obligatory announcement that the game will receive free next-gen upgrades for the PS5 and Xbox Series X that'll allow it to play in 4K at 120 frames per second. Again, cool if you play the game, but for me, it just didn't do all that much. But easily the best announcement of the show in my eyes was the Scott Pilgrim vs. The World The Game Complete Edition. After being taken off of digital stores and a lot of people asking for it, the 2010 Scott Pilgrim vs. The World game is finally returning for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Stadia, complete with all the extra add-on content as well. I never got to play the original game, but as someone who really loves game preservation, it makes me happy to see this coming back, and I definitely want to try it myself given all the great things that I previously heard about it. I also hope it gets a physical release at some point so that it can be further preserved in the future. After that, we got a look at Watch Dogs Legion. This has been one of the few Ubisoft games I've been excited about. I very much loved Watch Dogs 2, and that excitement didn't change here. There wasn't a whole lot of new stuff shown off with the gameplay, but that didn't bother me too much because the game still does look very good. And they also announced that Stormzy would be making music for the game and even feature in it. Honestly, nothing but respect for Stormzy. I'm very excited to see him in the game, and apparently he'll have his own special mission in it too, which is pretty awesome. They also announced that the game will feature a mission with Aiden Pierce from Watch Dogs 1, which honestly doesn't excite me too much because Aiden was one of my least favorite things about the first Watch Dogs game. But nevertheless, Watch Dogs Legion releases on October 29th, and it will be coming out as a launch title for the next-gen platforms, and I'm very much excited for it. And then the show ended off with Riders Republic, a new extreme sports IP from the studio behind Steep. The game definitely does feel reminiscent of several other Ubisoft extreme sports games that they've put out in the past. The game is coming out February 25th for the current and next-gen iterations of the PlayStation and Xbox, as well as PC. Conceptually, it looks cool, but I really couldn't tell how much of the gameplay trailer that they showed was actual gameplay and not flashy CGI. I'd like to bet more of it was the latter, but regardless, it's hard to gauge what to think of it without being able to see more of the gameplay. Maybe it'll be cool, but for now, I'm just not sure. In terms of notable snubs, there were actually a lot more than I had initially expected. Some of those games included Skull and Bones. I'm not too surprised they did announce beforehand that it wouldn't be there. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I know, is coming soon, but I'm surprised they didn't take some of the time they spent on Rainbow Six Siege and use it for Assassin's Creed. Far Cry 6, it is coming out in about five months, and we still haven't seen any gameplay for it. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Quarantine, not that I was really looking forward to it, but still. And, of course, Beyond Good and Evil 2. I honestly can't even remember the last time we actually heard about that game. Overall, this Ubisoft showcase was pretty average to me. It wasn't bad. I've certainly been through worse showings from Ubisoft, but there just weren't that many huge standouts. I appreciate some of the deep dives into the games, but I think Ubisoft spent a bit too much time with some of them, and yet still came away with underwhelming showcases of several of the games. Per their usual code, it felt more like I was watching a lot of flashy CGI for quite a few of these games, instead of seeing proper gameplay. And of the games that did show gameplay, only a few really looked that compelling to me. Even though Ubisoft is one of the biggest third-party companies in the world, and one of the most recognizable, I feel like they have one of the weaker lineups of the major third-party studios, and these days, it's become harder and harder to get excited for them. This showcase didn't really get me too excited either, and to be honest, it just kind of bored me. It wasn't the worst thing ever, but it was just hardly very interesting. In terms of highlights, I would say Immortals Phoenix Rising, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, The Game, Complete Edition, and Watch Dogs Legion were my high points. And in terms of lowlights, Hyperscape was probably the lowest of them, but honestly, pretty much everything outside of the highlights just looked eh to me, so it all just blended together. And overall, if I had to grade this Ubisoft forward event, I would say it would get a C from me. Not a C plus, not a C minus, just right in the middle. Pretty average, pretty forgettable. Nothing that really got me any more excited about Ubisoft than I was. And I wasn't very, so this didn't really change my mind. But that's just my opinion on this Ubisoft forward. What did you guys think about it? Maybe you enjoyed it more than I did. Maybe you hated it more than I did. Maybe you were just as indifferent. Whatever your thoughts were, leave them down in the comments. Let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do. If you guys want to hit like and subscribe, thank you. If not, it's no 
big deal, I totally understand. And as I like to do with this gaming discussion series, often I want to open it up to fan requests for topics to talk about. Like I said, I was considering talking about Xbox Series X versus PS5 and potentially giving my thoughts on the new Avengers game if time allows for it this month. But beyond your thoughts on the Ubisoft Forward, leave in the comments section some topics in the gaming world that you would like me to discuss in a video. I can't guarantee I'll be able to get to all of them, but I will certainly consider them. So stay tuned for new videos, but until next time, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.